Welcome everyone to Living with the Times. We're beginning a new book, the book of Shemot, book of Exodus. And the word Shemot means names. And it's taken from the first verse. And these are the names of the children of Israel who came down to Egypt, Yaakov and his house. And then it mentions the 12 tribes. And so we're told the whole book is called the Book of Names. And it's because the transition is being made now from the family of Yaakov to the nation of Israel. And we're told that one of the ways that we were able to survive the slavery is we kept our names. We kept our identity. But we're also told that there's another reason it's called the Book of Names, and that is because the essential name of God, the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter name of God, is really revealed in this book, even though it's been mentioned many times in the book of Genesis. But the second portion of the book of Shemot begins by God saying to Moshe, I revealed myself to Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov with the name Kael Shakai, but my name Yudke Vavke I did not make known to them. And everyone asks a question. If you look at the book of Genesis, we see that the four-letter name of God did appear to Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So what does it mean that I did not make this name known? So Rashi, in a very important comment, says that the name Yud, Yud Ke Vav Ke means I promise and I fulfill. So Rashi says God promised Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov the land of Israel. But here they are in the depths of exile, in the depths of slavery. So God says, I did not really reveal myself with this name, but now I am going to. And then we see as the book develops, God takes them out of Egypt. And even though they ended up wandering for 40 years, they were meant to come right into Israel. So the book of names is our names, our identity, the formation of the nation of Israel, and at the same time, the revelation of God in the world. And so let's take just one name <clears throat> from this portion and try to understand it according to its Hebrew letters, because all the names in the Torah are highly significant. And in fact, every word in the Torah is made up of Hebrew letters. And the more we understand about the letters, the more we understand every word in the Torah and certainly every name in the Torah. So one of the key figures is Miriam. And in Hebrew, her name is four letters, Mem, Resh, Yud, Mem. If you divide it by its syllable, it spells Mar, Yam, bitter waters. If you take the Resh out of the name, you have the word for Mayim, Mem, Yud, Mem. So Miriam has a lot to do with water. When Moshe is put in a little basket, hoping to save his life because they were killing all of the male children, she stood on the banks of the Nile waiting to see what would happen. And especially because when Moshe was born, Miriam had a prophecy. And she said, this will be our Redeemer. 
the Redeemer was just born. And when they had to, just three months later, put his basket in the Nile, so her father said to her, and what's with your prophecy now? They didn't even know if Moshe would survive. But of course, the daughter of Pharaoh finds him, and Miriam rushes over and says, can I get a nursemaid for you? And so... Moshe was actually returned to his natural mother for two years until the daughter of Pharaoh takes Moshe into her house. So she waited 80 years till Moshe came back from Midian to lead Israel out of Egypt. So she waited for 80 years to see her prophecy come true. So we can understand mar yam, bitter waters. But if you take the word mar and you just switch the letters from mem resh to resh mem, it spells ram mayim, the exalted waters. And so here we see when Israel comes out of Egypt and they come to the Read Sea, and God performs a miracle, and they cross. Moshe sings a song with all of Israel. And then the Torah says that Miriam led all the women in the singing. And there she's called a prophetess, because here she saw her prophecy come true. And so therefore her name is Ram Miri, Ram Mayim, the exalted waters. And she sang the song of the sea with all of the women. But even more than that is, according to tradition, it was on her merit that there was water in the desert. A desert for quite literally millions of people is not such a simple thing. But there was a constant water, and we're told it was in the merit of Miriam. And so here we see that this, these are the exalted waters of Miriam. So this is the book of names. Now let's look quickly at one other name, and that is Moshe. Moshe is named Moshe by the daughter of Pharaoh. And she says, Mina Mayam Mishitihu, from the waters I have drawn him out. Mishitihu. So the mem and the shin of that word becomes the mem and the shin of Moshe. Mem shin he. He was drawn from the water. And when we look at Moshe's life, Water appears over and over again. Is he saved from the water? When Israel comes out of Egypt, he splits the sea. Before that, when he is in Midian for 40 years, he meets his wife, Zipporah, at the well. He goes back to Egypt, brings the people out. He is instrumental in splitting the sea. He hits the rock and water comes out and he brings the Torah down from heaven and Torah is, is associated with water. As the sages said, Ein Mayim Ela Torah. Anytime the word water is mentioned, it is a metaphor for Torah itself. So the fact that Moshe is drawn from the water, so the first letter of his name is a mem, which is the first letter of the word for mayim. But the second letter is a shin, which is the letter of fire. And that's connected to God revealing himself to Moshe for the first time at the burning bush, fire. And then when Moshe brings the Torah down, to Am Yisrael, 
At the giving of the Torah, it says that the, the, the mountain was on fire, ad leva shemaim, to the heart of heaven. And so Moshe is a combination of mayim and esh, water and fire. The Arizal says that the three letters of Moshe's name, Mem is for Moshe, the Shin is for Shet, and the He is for Hevel. Hevel in English is Abel. And when Cain killed Abel, later Adam and Eve have another son, Shet. And the Ari reveals that Shet is a reincarnation of Hevel. And both of these souls are incarnated in Moshe. And so Shet was the first incarnation. And therefore Moshe is this ancient soul. And his soul in its heavenly abode is really coming from the same place of the Torah that preceded this world, the primordial Torah. And that is, in a sense, the source of Moshe's soul. When it says he was drawn from the water, his soul is drawn from the waters of Torah. And that's why he merited to receive the Torah for Israel. In the blessing that Yaakov gives Yehuda, which is very prophetic about Mashiach. It's all about Mashiach. And it says, Ad Yavo Shiloh, that the scepter of rulership will not leave the hand of Yehuda until Shiloh comes. And Shiloh is this mysterious name which does not really appear again. But we're told that the numerical value of Shiloh is Moshe, 345. And Yavo Shiloh, until Shiloh comes, Yavo Shiloh is Gematria 358, which is Mashiach. So here is one of the hints to what the sages say about Moshe. Hu goel rishon, hu goel acharon. He is the first redeemer, and he will be the last redeemer. That the soul of Moshe with David is the soul of Mashiach. And so here we see Mashiach is really Moshe. And we see it in the numerical value, Ad Yavo Shiloh, when Shiloh comes. So one last thing is the numerical value of Moshe's name. If you add one for the name itself, equals Ratzon, equals will. And here we see Moshe, even though he's described as the most humble person on the face of the earth, he also is the epitome of will that he was able to lead Israel for 40 years from slavery to the gateway to the Holy Land. And it was with incredible willpower that he did this. And the Alter Rebbe says that every Jew has a point of Moshe in them. And that this point is the point of, of intellect and of ratzon, of will. So that means that each and every one of us has the same capability to be a leader. And this is what the Baal Shem Tov said, that every Jew has a spark of Mashiach. So that spark of Mashiach is a spark of leadership. It is the spark of Moshe that it is in each and every one of us. And Isaiah said 
that the Jewish people, their mission is to be a light unto the nations, to lead the world to the knowledge of one God, to lead the world to a global spiritual village of harmony and peace. And may we see it in our time.